So here we have the trig identity, the cotangent of x plus the tangent of x is equal to the cosecant of x multiplied by the secant of x. And we need to prove that this trig identity is true. So basically what we need to do is we need to make sure that the left side is equal to the right side. So we need to change this left side somehow and make it look exactly the same as the right side. And the first thing I always like to do is rewrite everything on the left side in terms of sine and cosine. So we know that the cotangent of x is equal to the cosine of x divided by the sine of x. And if you don't have this memorized already, you need to write this down. The cotangent of x is equal to the cosine of x divided by the sine of x. And this is all being added with the tangent of x. And the tangent of x is equal to the sine of x divided by the cosine of x, which is just the opposite of the cotangent. So now we have rewritten the left side in terms of sine and cosine. And the right side of the equation always stays exactly the same. So notice how I copied the right-hand side of the equation, cosecant of x multiplied by the secant of x, and I wrote it a little further to the right, uh, just so I can have a little bit more space here uh, for my next step. So what are we actually going to do for our next step? Uh, the only thing that I can see is I see that we have this red fraction uh, being added with this blue fraction, um, so let's try and add these fractions together. But before we add these fractions together, uh, notice how they have different denominators. In the red fraction, we have a sine in the denominator, and in the blue fraction, we have a cosine. So we need to make common denominators. Since the red fraction has a sine but no cosine, I'm going to multiply both the top and bottom by the cosine of x to make a common denominator. And since the denominator in the blue fraction has a cosine but doesn't have a sine, I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the sine of x, also to make a common denominator. So now I'm just going to simplify everything just a little bit. On the left-hand side in the numerator, we have the cosine of x multiplied by the cosine of x, which is the cosine squared of x. And in the denominator, we have the cosine of x multiplied by the sine of x, which can't be simplified, so that stays the same. And on the right-hand side, we have the sine of x multiplied by the sine of x, which is the sine squared of x. And in the bottom, we still have our common denominator of the cosine of x multiplied by the sine of x. And once again, our right-hand side of the equation stays the same. And now that we have common denominators, we can add these two fractions together. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to scroll down just to give myself a little bit more space. When adding two fractions, you just need to add the numerators. So in the numerator, we have cosine squared of x plus a sine squared of x. Uh, you can't simplify that, so that just stays the same. And when adding two fractions, our common denominator stays the same. So in our denominator, we're going to have the cosine of x, sine of x. Once again, our right-hand side of the equation stays the same. So now what are we going to do next? This is something else that you also have to have memorized. This is a Pythagorean identity. The cosine squared of x plus the sine squared of x is equal to 1. So instead of writing the cosine squared of x plus the sine squared of x in the numerator, I'm going to put a 1 in the numerator. And once again, if you don't have that memorized, you need to write that down. The cosine squared of x plus the sine squared of x is equal to 1. And of course, we can't forget to copy our right side of the equation. And moving on to our next step, I'll scroll down just a little bit. I think many of you will agree with me that 1 over the cosine x sine of x is equal to 1 over the cosine of x multiplied by 1 over the sine of x. And we can double check this so you can see what's going on. In our numerator, we have 1 times 1, which is 1. And in our denominator, we have the cosine of x 
multiplied by the sine of x, which is just the cosine of x times the sine of x. Once again, our right-hand side of the equation stays the same. So now this is starting to look a little nicer. Notice on the left-hand side how we have the reciprocal of the cosine. We have 1 over the cosine of x. The reciprocal of the cosine is the secant of x. Please write that down if you don't have it memorized. 1 over the cosine of x is the secant of x. And on the right-hand side, we have 1 over the sine of x, which we know is the cosecant of x. And this is nice. Now our left side of the equation, secant of x times this cosecant of x, is equal to our right side of the equation. And once we've made both sides equal, we can stop. We have proven that the identity is true.